Hey everybody, welcome back to Arkham Horror the Card Game. Let's continue our investigations. Right, so we're just coming into the second round. I unfortunately lost my wonderful hyper awareness, but, um, you know, and Jen's got the voices in her head that will prevent her from getting her book of lore or her holy rosary played this round, but that's okay. We're still trying to investigate because we um, only have three of the six clues that we need, but let's see if we can turn that around uh, this round and uh, get them you know, and uh, you know, and find this item and get the heck out of here. So I am still the first player, and I could explore some more, but we really need to be investigating. So, but since I lost my awareness, I already failed once. I think what I'll do is I will try to um, investigate in here because this is a pretty easy room to investigate. There's only a two, and uh, so let's go for it. And my default skill is three. Let's draw. Although, oh, okay. okay. A very, very important thing I completely forgot to mention. Um, every card in this game has a double use. Uh, you know, like, like my hyper-awareness. I played it as an asset, which meant I put it into play, and it gave me a special power for the rest of the game. Instead of using it for this, I could have used it for these icons up here. Every card has icons up in the top left corner of the screen that says that they can help you in a given test whenever you do it. Now, you have to play the card before you do the test. So, if I was about to investigate, and I really wanted to make sure I was going to be successful, if I had this card in my hand, and I, I knew my investigate ability was only three, and I wanted to up it a little bit, I could discard this card, not for a type or awareness ability, but instead to increase either my agility or my investigation skill by one. And so my, uh, so that would up my chances. And in fact, I can discard multiple cards, usually. So I could discard hyper-awareness plus um, deduction plus evidence, and that would give me my base of three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'd be all but guaranteed to succeed. And now the same thing is true in the main run-through when I um, ran into that chill that four, and remember, I, I, was, I was all but guaranteed to fail at this. That wasn't entirely true because if I was willing to discard cards from my hand, I could have increased my willpower. For instance, I could have discarded this unexpected courage, which gives me two wild cards. So that would have pushed my willpower from um, three up to five. And then I would have had a decent chance, although I would have burned this card. It would have gotten discarded and I wouldn't be able to use it for other stuff. Um, so anyway, so that's always something to bear in mind. Um, your cards are all multi-use. You can use them for their main stated use or to help you on tests. So if I want to really ensure I'm going to succeed at this, maybe I should bump my skill up with, with this deduction because this card says it adds one to my investigation skill. So my investigation skill is four. And now here's an interesting thing. This is a skill card. Whenever you use a skill card instead of an event or an asset card, uh, whenever you use a skill card to bump up your skill during a test, that's when you get to do this stuff down below. So, since I'm, I'm going to use this, I'm going to use this deduction to bump up my investigation. It says, if the skill test is successful while investigating a location, which is what I'm doing, discover one additional clue. So, for one action, I'll find two clues if I'm successful here. So, I'm going to go ahead and discard this so it bumps mine up. If I really want to be sure I'm going to succeed, I could throw in my evidence as well. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to save that because normally, this is an event, I would play this after I defeat an enemy and it lets me discover a, an additional clue for free. So enemies are going to come out. They're going to come out. I guarantee it. So I'm saving this for when I have to go fighting. And so, so now, my investigation skill is temporarily bumped up to four, which is almost as good as Jen's. I only need a two. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Let's see what I draw. And now that I'm drawing, I can't, after the fact, play more cards. So you got to commit before you draw. And what do I get? A minus two. Dun, dun, dun. All right. So um, three minus two is one. I'm failing. Plus one from the deduction means I succeeded just barely. And because I did, I got two clues instead of one. Man, for a federal investigator, I'm really terrible at investigating. I barely pulled that off. Okay. So that was my first of three actions. And now between us, we have five of the six clues we need to be able to um, finish this. Uh, because basically at the end of anybody's turn, if um, we all provide six, we will go on to the next step. So we're making good time. So that means should I continue right now and try to investigate some more? I don't think so in all honesty 
Because if I do and I, well, again, Jen is much more, and she's going to succeed when it comes around to her. So I don't think so. But I don't have any more assets I can put into play. Um, I have this event to play, but um, I, it, it, and it's basically what this is, mind over matter. Until the end of the round, I can use my investigation instead of my strength or my dexterity. Uh, and because my def I wouldn't want to do it for my strength. I'm very strong. I've got a strength of four, but my agility, my dexterity is two. So if I had to like do some kind of dexterity test to avoid taking damage, I could play mind over matter, which would bump me up to three instead of two, as an example. Or instead, I don't use this as an event. I use this to increase my strength or my agility when I really need it, like when I'm fighting or something like that. Hmm. You know what, though? Here's the thing. Bad guys are going to come out. I want to be prepared for that. I don't have anything, I mean, because you know, I've got weapons in my deck. I've got my 38 Special and some other guns besides. I think I'm going to spend a couple of actions just getting ready for more bad guys. Because one of the things you can do on your, one of your actions is draw a card. So I'll draw, and I've got Perception. All right, I've, I really want to get a weapon. And I've got a flashlight. Okay, so that was my turn. I did a, a good double investigation, and then I drew two cards, and I still couldn't find any of my guns. I am literally the worst F FBI agent ever. Okay. Well, interestingly, this flashlight is nice. I get to use it three times, and it puts minus two or, um, on the shroud of any room. So it makes it super easy to investigate rooms. So in the future, I'll be able to investigate much better with this flashlight. But anyway, my turn is over. Those are my three actions. Jen's turn. All right. Well, first of all, she's hearing the voice in her head, so she cannot put these into play, which she would love to do. So instead, she's going to start out by investigating and get this last clue, at which point we're done with the lobby. It won't have any use for us. So her base is her magnifying glass, of one plus uh, five. So she's at a six. She has to hit a two. Let's see what she gets. Um, she gets the only plus one in there. It's a seven. So she completes it with style. All right. So she's done with this room. I think for her second action, um, she will go on ahead and move. She can come over here with me, because this room is easier to clear out. Yeah, what the heck? She'll come over here. She'll uh, be at the Hall of the Exotics with me. She doesn't want to be off alone by herself, in case bad guys show up. And so for her third action, she will investigate in here. Again, she's got a six. Minus two turns it down to a four, but still, she only needed a two, so she got a, um, a clue in here as well. We've got seven total clues. Yeah! All righty. So, um, and those were her three actions. She searched, she moved, she searched. She didn't get anything into play, and um, now, if there were enemies, they would hunt us, they would attack us and whatnot. And now, um, at the end of the round, reset actions. Oh, wait, oh, wait. Okay, so, we're going to play between us. See, Jen will play one, two, three, four... Five, six. Heck, Jen single-handedly has enough clues. I don't even have to play any of my clues. Um, so uh, she has finished Act One. You can do that at the end of a turn. Sometimes it, it, you know, the card indicates when. Maybe you can only do it at the end of a round or whatever. But at the end of Jen's turn, she played all six of her clues, and she complete. We've completed Act One. So we flip this, and. Um, Ooh, wow, this is an actual quote from H.P. Lovecraft's novel, The Shadow Out of Time, from 1936. Alrighty, so, uh, piecing together the scattered records, ancient and modern, anthropo anthropological and medical, I found a fairly consistent mixture of myth and hallucination, whose scope and wildness left me utterly dazed. Only one thing consoled me, the fact that the myths were of such early existence. What lost knowledge could have brought, uh, what lost knowledge could have brought pictures of the Paleozoic or Mesozoic landscape into these primitive fables, I could not even guess. But the pictures had been there, says H.P. Lovecraft, from an excerpt from Shadow Out of Time. So, um, nothing happened. Okay, well, um, although you know something happened. Spawn Peter Warren in the curator's office. This was a card we set aside. Peter Warren is up here in the curator's office. All righty. And we'll still see what those other cards do later on. That we had to set aside. So maybe we need to go up and uh, have a tete-a-tete, a, a, -a, -tete, a heart to heart with uh, Peter Warren. But anyway, so uh, that's the, down here is the main thing that actually happened. This was just some flavor text, uh, an actual quote from H.P. Lovecraft that actually fits. We've been investigating in a museum. No doubt this is kind of describing what we've discovered. Um, very scary stuff. So anyway, we have finished. And now, continuing on, um, we are in, um, we're in our second one. Once we finish this, we win. How do we finish it? 
We need 20 clues. Wow, that is insane. Okay, the main thrust of this adventure is clues. Lots and lots of investigation, which is interesting. Now that I know this, I might have actually built these decks to be really, really strong in clue generation, um, you know, putting in more things like deduction and magnifying glasses so that we could be better at investigating because we got to find 20 more clues. Now, there's one, two, three more here. There's none here. There's going to be some here. There's presumably going to be some in here. So that's a lot of clues, but I don't know if there's going to be 20 amongst all that. It's unlikely there's going to be. And so, here's another thing. From now on, anytime you want, we can spend an action on our turn to discard a card to gain a clue token from the pool. So in addition to the clues we can find in rooms, we can just start hemorrhaging our cards to convert them into clues. But we can only do it once per turn. So that's an interesting twist. We're going to have to start burning through our cards, which kind of represents us burning through you know, our sanity, our resources, anything we've got to get more and more clues, to get 20 clues. I, I, mean, I have actually played through the all the base of the game. I've never seen a situation where we have to generate 20 clues. That is the trick of this. And while we're trying to get these and we're finding them in the rooms, we're burning our cards to do it, the countdown will be happening. Okay. Yikes. Okay, so it's interesting. If I had another action, I would do that right now. I would burn a card because we need to start finding these clues before we are out of time. Let's see, what does this say? A voice echoes in your mind. It's asking you questions. So many questions. A library's worth of questions. A lifetime worth of questions. The air around you begins to shiver, shimmer. Impossibly tall sandstone columns are faintly visible as the present begins to waver. Dun, dun, dun. We're out of time, folks. Um, obviously, this was all some big elaborate trap. We need to get 20 clues to get out of here because I don't know if we're actually going to get traveled back in time, which again fits with this little uh, bit of, um, th th this, this was not a cat burglary. We fall, oh no. Okay, so that's the situation. While the doom, I mean, yeah, we're, we're starting to break through the walls of reality. Okay, which is why we got to start burning our cards fast. Stat. Okay. Anyway, though, so um, we finished the first act. Yay. Let's see. Um, Reset, we didn't tap anything. Ready, exhausted cards. Uh, all right, oh, we each draw another card. And I'm getting close to my hand limit. Oh, wait, oh no, this is from Jen's. Oh no, it's the Silver Twilight. This is Jen's enemy. Remember I said she has a weakness? Um, it's an enemy. So this thing, just it, he's, he's caught up with us. He's no doubt chasing um, Daisy because uh, he wants the Necronomicon. He has shown up. He um, is going to... Jen is her prey, so he always attacks Jen if he can. He's a hunter. He will literally chase Jen around in this place. And after he attacks, place one Doom token on the agenda. So he's going to speed up the, the clock. He's right in here with us. Oh, my goodness. Well, I need to take that guy out fast. That's a problem. That was not a good card for Jen to draw. Let's see what I draw from my deck. Um, physical training. Okay, I might need this. I still can't find a gun. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I haven't hit my hand limit yet, but I'm going to use my physical training and maybe some unexpected courage to try and take this guy out fast. Um, uh, because as soon as he starts attacking, he starts um, making the timer. So that's a bit scary. All right, so we've drawn cards. Now we move on to the next round. More Doom. As soon as one more Doom appears here, we're going to have to flip the card and find out the next step of the bad guy's agenda. And we now have to draw an encounter. I will draw my encounter. Ah! Oh my gosh, a ravenous ghoul um, who always preys on whoever has the lowest health. Oh my gosh, this is super scary. Everybody's stuck in here. So a uh, ghoul just jumped us. And uh, no doubt because the barrier between the past and the present is breaking down. And Jen draws Rotting Remains. Uh, she has to do a willpower test right now. For each point she fails, she takes one horror. Um, no doubt um, we must have come in here and we just spotted the ghoul feasting on some rotting, rotting remains. And Jen will be horrified by seeing that. Let's see. So her basic willpower is three. So if she draws a zero or a plus one, she's fine. She won't take any horror. Now she could burn through a card... She could use this unexpected courage to give her plus two, or the book of lore to give her plus one, or the rosary to get plus one, or the uh, blinding light. But she's not going to do that. We need all this stuff to burn through for clues. She's just going to go on ahead and hope for the best. Oh, by the way, at the end of the round, the dissonant voices finally went away. So this is the new thing. Jen is terrified. Show me a zero or a plus one. A minus two. Ouch. So her willpower um, three minus two is a one. 
She needed three, she failed by two, so she just took two horror. Now, each one of us has two life meters, our hit points and our sanity. Jen can take up to five physical points of damage and up to nine points of horror. So she can, I mean, she's read a lot in these books, she can handle it. I'm the opposite. I can take nine physical damage, but only five horror because I am not prepared for the horrors that await us here. So Jen just took some, some mental anguish, uh, some, she, she just lost some sanity because she saw this ghoul feasting on the rotting remains right at the same time that the silver twilight, oh my goodness, it's all very scary. So, hey, we just went from zero to overdrive, folks. We are in trouble. So that was it. Um, right, we've each done our encounters, and now, here we go, I need to fight. I need to, to push these guys off. So, let's see here. And, while the ravenous ghoul is bad, because he's tougher, he's got three hit points, he d attacks for three, he, if you try to evade him and get away, you need, to beat a th you need to hit a three. He, when he attacks, he does one physical and one mental damage. Uh, the sight of the thing raised the question, uh, do we eat to live or do we live to eat? Clearly, he's uh, living to eat. So he's bad, but as bad as he is, the acolyte is worse because as long as he's around, he's going to make the timer go. So I'm going to take him out now. He also has three hit points. He does two damage and he has three evade also. So let's take this guy down. Stat. Right. So I am first. I am going to do... I don't have any guns. Um, all right, oh, you know, first action, oh, 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 by the way, sorry, I forgot to mention, as soon as these guys got spawned, because they were in an area with us, they immediately engaged. The Acolyte, um, they, um, who they engage with, well, it's, it'll say who they engage with, the Acolyte, their prey is the bearer, so the, the Acolyte engaged with Jen, the Acolyte is attacking Jen. The ghoul, their prey was whoever has the lowest health. Jen has five versus nine, so they both jumped on Jen. That is bad news. Okay, because they're both going to attack her. They could wipe her out very, very quickly. Um, so that's kind of scary. So here's the deal. We're both standing here. Now I can attack them. Even though they're on Jen, I can attack them. But here's the problem. If I attack and miss, then that means any damage I would have struck will hit Jen instead. Now, what I can do instead, remember, I've got three actions. One of the actions you can do is you can, um, where is it? You can uh, engage, uh, play, activate, move, investigate, fight, or engage. If I engage these enemies, it will pull them off of Jen and pull them onto me. That means once they're on somebody, they're going to stay on them. So they'll stay on me. They won't attack Jen. And there's no danger of me hurting her. If So I could spend two actions pulling both of these guys onto me, and then I could attack them because I've got a lot more hit points. I can take a beating better than Jen. Plus, I don't want to take the chance of hitting Jen. But that means I'll only get one potential attack. That's not good. I need to take this acolyte out before he starts um, you know, making the timer go. Um, plus, I want to spend an action getting my physical training into play. Um, it's an asset because if I get this into play, I can spend my resources to increase my strength so that I will hit them harder. So, uh, okay, I think I, I, there's no time to pull them off of Jen. My first action, I'm going to put physical uh, training into play. That's cost two of my resources. By the way, did I give us resources back? I don't think I did. I think I forgot at the end of the round. We both drew a card, but we didn't get our, free, or our resources refreshed. All right, so I played two to get this. Now I can spend resources to increase my strength as much as I want. So that was my first action. My second action is I am not going to spend time pulling the guy off. I'm just going to go out straight out, attack him. Although here's the problem. He has three hit points. Every time, you, every time you get a successful attack, that does one point of damage. So I could attack him twice, and that would do two of the three points of damage, but then Jen will have to attack him to finish him off before he fights back. <sighs> oh, here's the other thing as well. If I'm attacking, um, remember I've got, let's see, if I defeat an enemy, I get to discover a clue for free, so that's pretty cool. I've also got um, this, which lets me get a uh, clue after... I defeat an enemy. Ah, but that's not... Also, ah, remember, I need to spend actions to discard cards from my hand so I can generate clues from the pool because we need the clues. We need 20 clues. But I don't have time for this because there's two bad guys who just jumped us. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Now, is Jen... If I do two damage to this acolyte, will Jen be able to finish him off? Um, let's see. She does have blinding light. This is a spell she can use to help her evade. That's not what we need right now. 
Um, she does have unexpected courage. If she plays this as a skill, it would add two. Let's see, her default strength is two. This would put her strength up to four. And she has no other way to increase her strength. So she might have a chance, if she gets a zero or the one, or even a negative one, she could do the final point of damage and take this guy out before he hits her. Man, now that I think about it, I don't know if I have time to pull out this physical training. Because, I mean, if, if I just spend all three actions just wailing on this guy from a distance, I can take him out. And then Jen is free to evade the ghoul, run away by using her blinding light spell, and then she can go back to investigating, and then that means she'll leave the ghoul for me. So that might be a good plan. Huh. All right. But let's see, my default, and again, I, can't, I haven't drawn, I really wanted a gun, or a machete, or a knife, or any of the weapons I've got in this deck. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. This is scary. Um, let's see. All right, tell you what. All right, we're going to go right off the bat. I'm not going to spend an action. I'm going to do all three actions attacking this Acolyte and hopefully take it out so Jen doesn't have to worry, and then she'll evade the ghoul so she won't have to get hit. That's the plan. So, my first attack. I am going to try... I'm not, I, I could just go with my default strength of four. I got a decent chance. But I'm going to throw out this card to put my default strength. I'm adding two more, so my strength is now six. And since this is a skill card, if I succeed... And now this says I can only put one card. Normally you can play as many cards as you want, but there's a limit. I can only play one because I'm trying to overpower this Acolyte. If I succeed, I'll get to draw a card. Hopefully I'll draw a weapon. So, I'm going to try to overpower. I'm using this. My strength is six. And it is six minus four! What the heck? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, minus four is two. That means I didn't get the three. If I had said thrown in this mind over matter as well, my default strength would have been high enough. Oh my gosh. Wow. And so I burn this, I get nothing for it. Wow. And... That changes, oh my gosh, I didn't get to draw a card, I didn't kill that guy. Because there's only one negative four in this, and there was a one in, a one in 16 chance. My chance, oh my gosh. Here's the thing though, actually, uh, because remember I couldn't play, I, I could not have thrown another card in anyway, because the overpower, but if I had drawn anything else, if I had drawn the negative two, or the negative two, or the negative two, or the skull, which in this case would have been a negative one. Anything other than a negative four. You know what, folks? I'm going to totally cheat. I'm just going to cheat. This is crazy. Um, hey, look, a negative one. That's a little bit more normal. Hey, I did a point of damage. Because I really want to demonstrate how everything works. Normally, I would just live with it. Um, and, but, you know, uh, but I want to show off... I mean, a 1 in 16 chance, that's not really showing you the base game. The real game is, I should have succeeded, because I paid a heavy price. I've done one of the three points of damage, and hey, I get to draw another card. Please be a gun. Um, no, this is an asset. This is an ally of mine. Uh, it costs four resources to put him into play, and he helps my investigation ability. Dr. Milan Christopher, the uh, professor of entomology. I guess I, um, I, if I put him into play, that means I, um, I stumbled across him. He must have been investigating something on his own, and he becomes somebody who can help us. All right, um, but that is not the gun I was hoping to draw. So that was my first of three attempts. I'm totally cheating, just, all right. So now for my second attempt. Wow, let's see here. Now I could dump some more cards in. I could display some unexpected courage, which will give me two wilds. And again, max one per test. I don't want to take a chance of failing, so I'm going to put this in. So once again, I'm going with a six. I should not fail here. Oh my gosh, what's this? Minus three, if there is a Yithian enemy at your location, take one horror. So six minus three is three. I just barely pulled this off. Um, Yithian uh, creatures could have been a chasing us, in which case I would have taken horror because they would have scared the crap out of me. But as is, I've successfully done the second point of damage. One more point of damage, and I've done it. But here's the thing. And okay, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Now, um... And also, remember, if I get to defeat this guy, I get to discover a clue. So, I'm going to try and... Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw in this Mind Over Matter. It's only going to increase my strength by one. Um, right. Because the other thing, use this. I could put this into play. It doesn't even take an action to do it. And that means I can use my Investigation 
instead of my strength, but my investigation is three, so I'm not going to do that. So I'm discarding this to give myself one more strength. It's the only, and I could discard my physical training to give me two more strength, but then it's gone. I'd rather get this into play. So I'm taking a big risk here, folks, and I won't cheat if I fail this time. So I'm coming in with a five, a five. Please, please, please don't let me fail. Oh my goodness. Show me a negative one. That's why I'm, I'm visualizing a negative one. Everybody visualize a negative one. Here we go. <gasps> oh my gosh, this thing again. It's a negative three, five, and I failed. And I drew this, oh my gosh. All right, well, that's terrible. That is absolutely atrocious. <sighs> okay, yikes. Well, I'm done. Good job, Fed. Good job, Roland. You suck. You can't even find a gun in your pocket. All right, nope, that changes everything. Because again, we got to take this guy out. If we do not take this guy out, um, oh, and by the way, not for nothing, because I attacked and I missed, I did a point of damage to Jen. I physically hit her. Oops, here it goes. Well done, Roland. Oh my gosh, wow. I should have played that other card. I should have, because then I would have succeeded. But I mean, man, those were insane. All right. Now, remember, I said right up front, I have set this to normal difficulty. As part of setup, you can make the game easier by changing the contents of this. So there's fewer bad discs and more good discs in here. And it really does make a big, big difference. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> so, Jen's turn. If she doesn't take this guy out, but she only has a strength of two, and you saw me with a strength of four, how badly I failed. She's got, she does have unexpected courage. If she plays this, it'll put her strength from two to four, but she can't um, put anything else in with it. Let's see, if she uses this evade, um, if she evades, um, an evasion uses your willpower instead of your agility, which is good because her willpower is three and her agility is two. If you succeed, deal one damage to the enemy just evaded. Um, and uh, if, one of the if one of the funky symbols is revealed during um, the attempt, lose an action. All right. So if she successfully evades, she'll get away from this guy. Oh, wait, no, no. She's got two on her. So if she evades, this guy will still be on, but she'll finish him. All right, she's going to try it. She's going to play the blinding spell. This is an event. It costs two resources to play it. Um, and it's a one, events are one-time things. Assets stick around. Events are one-time thing. So she's playing it to evade. She's going and instead of using her crappy dexterity of two, she's using her willpower of three. But she will pump that willpower with unexpected courage up twice. So that puts her willpower up to five. So she's got a base of five, and all she need, she needs a three to successfully evade. But if she does evade with this, with the blinding spell, she'll kill him as well. So here we go. She's got, um, and, and right, because she did this, she can't put anything else. Three, four, five. Oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. Oh, please. Show me a negative one. A negative two. Five is a three. She did it. Wow. Okay. So um, she evaded him, which means he would get put back in um, the room, and then later on when he gets to act, he would come after her again. If that was the only thing on Jen, she could now run away in safety, but the ghoul will hit her if she tries to run away now. But anyway, she evaded him, but because of the blinding flash, she also finished him, did one point of damage, and he is toast. He will never get his chance to, um, to in increase the doom counter, which is good. All righty. Um, so, now, this is Jen's weakness. He goes into Jen's discard pile. He might come back later. He is down but not out. He will continue to haunt Jen till the end of her days until she eventually gets rid of that Necronomicon. Um, but anyway, so hooray, we beat the bad guy. All right, so he's gone. So that was Jen's first action. She successfully evaded. Now, she's got a problem with this ghoul who is going to do a physical and a mental point of damage to her. And if she does anything other than tries to attack or evade right now, he will automatically get to do a free attack and will stick with her like glue. And he is tough to evade. He needs a three to evade. Wow, I think Jen, well, she could spend her next two actions trying to evade him. But if she does, he's just going to get right back on her anyway. 
Wow. But if Jen does anything else other than, you know, because it reminds us right here, if you're engaged with an enemy and spend an action to do anything other than fight, evade, or parlay or resign, those are special actions you can do in certain places or with certain abilities. Um, each enemy engaged with you makes an attack of opportunity. So Jen could just keep it searching here if she wanted, or she could try to leave, but he would do a point of damage, and since she didn't shake him off, he would follow her around. So she could fight or evade either, and let's see, evading is the better option because, no, it doesn't matter. Either way, it's a two. She has a two for her strength and for her evade skill. She's equally bad either way. Um, and all of her other cards, all they do is give her um, better investigation. She is not prepared for this ghoul. This is bad, bad news. So she try, if she evades successfully, then her last action would be to run away, and then the ghoul would be in the room with me, and then he would lock on to me, and Jen would be safe to go and start, you know, getting cards back, healing herself, continuing the investigation. If she evades, she gets away. I think she's got to try. She's going to try to evade. But here's the thing. If she evades and fails, she could try to evade again. Um, and if she succeeds the second time, she'll be out of actions and she won't have any actions to be able to get away and the guy will just jump on her. So, does she just try to attack and maybe do... I mean, he only has three hit points. Um, yeah. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Okay. Wow. Um... And the thing is, the bad guys, they just automatically do their damage. So if Jen attacks twice, she won't kill him. All right, she's going to take a chance. She's going to try to evade. And she's got nothing. She has almost zero chance of, of succeeding. Gosh. But if she just stands still and does other stuff, he's just going to wail on her. If she does anything other than try... Well, okay, she'll just... If she tries to attack, at least she, she could do some damage. Oh, okay, she's going to try to evade. If she gets the plus, no, actually, if she gets the plus one, she'll just be at a three. So she has a one in 16 chance. She has no cards that will help her with this. Wow. If she says to heck with it and decides, you know what, she's going to do other things, she could put the Holy Rosary into play. That gives her more willpower. Um, and the Holy Rosary can take mental damage, but not physical damage. Um, and this guy does mental damage, you know, sanity damage in addition to physical damage. Oh, my gosh. This is terrifying, folks. Um, we should have spent less time investigating and more time preparing. Because um, this was just incredibly bad luck that both of those jumped her. Now, she can take a few more hits. But right now, we don't have any way to heal. Um, so that's kind of scary, too. But as long as she just takes, stays away from bad guys. All right, what the heck? Let's, let's go for the evade. If she could get it, I mean, she's not going to get it, though. But if she gets it, great. If not, then she'll try to attack on her last turn. But either way, she's going to fail, no matter what, because I was a terrible protector. All um, right, but anyway, oh, so the blinding flash of light, that is gone, and her unexpected courage, that is gone. All right, and let's see here. I'll play, please be a negative, uh, plus one. It's a negative one, so she failed to evade. So no, no bad thing happened, but um, nothing good happened. Um, what the heck, she will... Now there's no reason to evade because she won't have any more actions to get away. So she's just going to try to attack. And she gets a skull, which is a negative one because there's one clue here. So she failed. It was pretty much guaranteed fail anyway. So that was it. Um, right. We are done with our actions. Now the bad guys get to go. If this bad guy wasn't on either of us, he would use his prey to come for one of us. Um, if he hadn't have a prey, they always go for the leader if they can. Uh, so they would normally come for me, which is good. Um, oh! Yeah, that's a good point. If Jen had successfully evaded, so her second attempt was a second attempt at evading, because if he'd evaded, the guy would have come for us, and he would have come for, no, he would have gone for Jen anyway, because she had less hit points, so he was going to come anyway. So anyway, he's on her, so he doesn't have to, right, so bad guys, enemies with the hunter keyword move from room to room. If they don't have hunter, they won't chase you from room to room, so you can get away. This guy would actually, and this guy would not hunt. Uh, if we could get away. Engaged enemies attack. So he's going to attack Jen. And enemies, they don't have to do, roll, do, do anything. They just, they just hit. So Jen has taken her third sanity and her second of five wounds. So that's it. She's in trouble. And now, at the end of the round, hey, we get to untap. We each get to draw a card. 
Um, I draw a guard dog. I still can't find my guns, but hey, I could get this guard dog out who will help us in the fight. And Jen draws an, an arcane initiate. This is an ally. It's a sorcerer, a friend of hers who can show up and after enters play, put a doom token on it so it'll increase the doom, which is not good. But you can exhaust the uh, arcane initiate to serve the top three cards of a deck for a spell and draw it to shuffle into the deck. So now Jen can use the Book of Lore to help me look for cards. She can use the arcane initiative to help herself look for cards. So that's helping. Oh, also each of us gets another resource. And we move on to round three. Um, where the third doom happens. Dun, dun, dun. The, uh, the agenda is going to move forward, folks. And as you turn a dark corner, well, um, uh, there's a bright and blinding pain in your head. You are knocked to the ground unconscious. Such a reliable stooge, smiles Mrs. Devereaux. Really, the best of sorts. Place, place the lead investigator in the storeroom. I am not in the room with her anymore. Spawn Victoria Devereaux in the Hall of the Exotic. Oh my gosh! Oh, we're doomed. And so this is a bad guy. We can parlay with her to deal with her. We can spend five resources. To, so we can bribe her to leave us alone. Otherwise, she's going to attack us. Fortunately, Jen has five resources. So we can bribe her to make her go away, which also will earn us a victory point, by the way. Otherwise, she's going to attack Jen. All right, so she just spawned. And when she spawns... Um, she, I mean, uh, she comes in and she's going to lock right onto Jen. Jen's got to bribe her. That's okay. I, meanwhile, am over here. I got conked and drug into the storeroom. And what was the other thing? Oh, and I gained amnesia. So I just became amnesiatic, um, which means I have to choose and discard all but one card from my hand. Oh, no. Wow. And that goes away. So that was the first step in the Night Museum. And now... With your head throbbing and the taste of betrayal in your mouth, you stumble to your feet. The room is dark and unfamiliar. You stumble into heavy objects before discovering the door is locked. Um, forced. Search the encounter deck and place um, or discard pile for a locked door and place it on the lead in, in, in the storeroom. Then shuffle the encounter deck and discard. So I'm not only did I get drug in there, she locked me in. So somewhere in here, there is a locked door. Here we go. So I am locked. Amnesia, I gotta get rid of all but one of my cards. Jen is trapped alone with the ghoul and Victoria. She can bribe Victoria to go away, but this ghoul is gonna continue to, and she has no way to get rid of it. Oh, oh this is my amnesia. Um, oh my gosh, wow. And in three more doom, something else bad is gonna happen. And meanwhile, we've still gotta get 10 clues or 20 clues. Well, see, I've got two. We need 18 more clues before two more things. So it's going to, obviously, we're going to go through a couple of these. This is designed so that we'll barely get all 20 clues in time. But man, this is bad, bad news, folks. I got to get rid of everything but one card. One, two. Oh my gosh. Oh, I mean, I, there's no time to investigate now. Forget about those things. Got to discard all of this. Um, I think I'm inclined to keep my guard dog. So I got pulled in there and I found a guard dog um, inside the closet, but I lost everything else. Oh my gosh. And now to get out of this room, um, attach the location with, um, right, so attach, uh, I, so the, the attached location cannot be investigated. Oh, by the way, I'm in this room. So there are six clues in here. One, two, three, four, five, six. But uh, it's tough, it's dark, you need a four, so it's tough to find them. And uh, cannot investigate in here. If we do a strength of four, we break down the door, or agility of four to pick the lock. If you succeed, discard the locked door. Um, all right, oh, so that's not bad. I'm not trapped in here. It's all the clues are behind this locked door, but I can still get out. So I can still spend an action to come back here um, pull the ravenous ghoul off of Jen so it'll start beating me. That Jen will um, bribe Victoria Devereaux, so that's what it's got to be. Okay, but that all just happened off the mythos phase. Now, before we find out what happens next, we got to reshuffle the bad, the encounter deck because we had to go looking for that, um, oh, what do you call it, that locked door. I'm not going to bother with it right now because I only have one hand, but wouldn't you know, we now need to have our encounters. So I draw my encounter card over there in the closet. Ooh, there's an offer of power. Some dark force is talking to me in the closet. All uh, right, you must either choose one, draw two cards, or place two doom tokens on the current agenda. 
or, uh, uh, oh, oh, this is a good choice. So I can draw two cards, which I need, but it puts two doom out, or take two horror. Oh, man. I need cards. I need cards bad. As I, oh, that amnesia killed us. I think I'm going to be crazy. I'm going to do it. I'm going to put two doom out so that I can draw two cards. And, oh, I got a beat cop. Yes, the cops have finally shown up. And I can work a hunch. All right. Hopefully, I won't regret that. So that gets this card. Jen draws one. And, hey, there's some treachery. Ancient evil. Place one doom on the current agenda. The effect of... So, another doom happens. Oh, no, folks. Boom. We just unlocked the second level of this, just like that. Uh, there's a scraping and tapping from behind you. You turn around to see a monstrous apparition. Search the encounter deck for a Yithian observer. I think I just saw one. Uh, yep, here we go. A Yithian observer. And spawn it in the lead. There's a Yithian observer in here in the closet with me. In the lo uh, current location. Then shuffle the encounter deck. Oh my gosh. And now the shadow gas. Eight more. When eight more doom tokens get placed, it's over. We have eight. We have... We have nine rounds to um, get 18 clues while dealing with the Ithian Observer and the ghoul and all of that. Oh my gosh. Meanwhile, a powerful mind grips yours with a savage grasp and begins to pull. A voice speaks to you. It prepares a bargain, a journey. You will see things no other man has seen. Know, the, um, know this other... Uh, yeah, oops, I think that's a typo. Know, this, know that which others cannot know, but you cannot return from this journey. Forced. At the end of each round, place one Doom token on this agenda until all investigators um, gained a clue during that round. Unless. So, wow. Every t round that we don't get at least one clue, this thing gets double. <sighs> We're doomed. So that's the thing, folks. We needed to come into this. I needed to build a deck that made somebody super powerful at investigating and somebody else super powerful at fighting so that that person would fight all the bad guys and protect the investigator. Right now, um, you know, it's, it's interesting. I, you know, I've got, what's his name? What's Roland's default deck? Is it's 50% or 30% guardian cards, 30% seeker cards. What I needed to do was I needed to have an extra bunch of guardian cards, dump the seeker cards, really make him a super strong guy um, so that he could fight everybody. And by the same token, probably dump uh, some of, as part of deck building, she has seeker and mythic cards. Maybe um, get some more seeker cards so she could explore like the Dickens, explore like crazy. She needed a lot of evade options, a lot of evade cards and a lot of search cards. He needs a lot of attacking, so he runs interference while she just runs around and keeps searching as fast as she can. We had to build decks specifically to win this thing. I didn't do it. I don't think we're going to make it because... We don't have time. I can't search for clues in here. I'm not very good at searching for clues. Um, taking those two cards to get this beat cop. I mean, he does increase my strength, and I can discard him to do an automatic damage. The dog, uh, and he can also take damage. The dog can take damage. And if the dog gets attacked, it automatically strikes back. So I'm ready to fight, but we don't have much time to find these 18 remaining clues. Maybe we could do it. But now that I know the story, I know how to build proper decks for these two characters to win. But as it is, things are in trouble. Oh, by the way, this Yithian Observer who just spawned. Um, let's see. Normally, he would go spawn with whoever has the fewest cards in hand, which would have been me anyway, but the rules had specific things. When he attacks, discard one card at random from your hand. If you cannot, he deals plus one damage and one plus one horror. So when he's attacking, he's bleeding cards. But we need to have our cards, because remember, we can bleed our own cards to get clues faster. So the thing is, every round, we can be dumping one card to get clues and prevent that timer from happening. But then that means we are only getting to do two actions per round, which Daisy needs to be spending searching, I need to spend fighting, and so on. And that, folks, is where we're going to stop, because that should give you a pretty good idea of what Arkham Horror the Card Game is all about. And also, some spoilers for The Collector. Now, I'm not going to finish this. Um, heck, I, 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 I could maybe get lucky. If I start burning cards and get some lucky draws um, and take these guys out quick, Jen, she's got the resources. She can bribe Victoria to go away. Um, and if she can evade this ghoul, but that's the problem. This ghoul is just going to keep beating on her. But if she gets this arcane initiate out, then she could have the ghoul um, beat on the arcane initiate. But what I have to do is I've got to come in here, which means this guy will hit me. 
I'll do a point of damage, you know, and then I'd come in here, he would follow me because he's on me now. Then I would pull the ghoul off of Jen. So those would be two of my three actions. And then my um, last, which, and I would take, I would get hit twice because I'm not evading or fighting. And then for my last action, what I should do is give up a card so that I can uh, do a search. Um, so as this won't do the timer, because everybody has to earn a clue to avoid this countdown. But really, the main thing I should do is um, you know, get my dog into play, so my dog could start fighting back. But then I'd take even more damage. Jen, meanwhile, on her turn, she would bribe Victoria, so Victoria would go away. Then she would um, discard a card, and she would start searching, and she would get the heck out of here and try to stay away from everything and search like crazy, get clues, while I fight desperately. Next round, I get the cop. Me, the cop, and the guard dog, plus what did I draw? An emergency cash. Three more resources. Um, but still, where's my guns? No nope, magnifying glass. Um, at least I could get a knife eventually so I could start trying to fight these things. That's what our, my future would look like. And that, folks, is a brief glimpse into some Arkham Horror, the card game. And now if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, hit that I or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.